The next person to take the piss out of my muffs is getting it, right? There's nothing wrong with them. It's got bark busters written on them. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> Will you fit the new GS1300? This is a very rough guide to some dimensions. My battery failed on this recently. I went into Joe Duffy, uh, that's the dealer in Dublin and Ireland. They replaced it under warranty, no problems at all. But while I was there, I checked out the new GS1300 they had in stock. Can't test drive them yet, but you can have a look at them. Uh, so I thought I'd take a few dimensions. Why am I particularly interested in this? Well, I have a bit of a, well, being a man of older years, <laughs> I have a few uh, bony sort of problems. Uh, so I have a bit of a dodgy hip. My knees are good. Uh, but a lot of people my age have some sort of ailment, whether it be hip, knees, whatever it may be. And seat to peg distance is really important to us. Now, I made a video on um, aging motorcyclists are buying the wrong motorcycle, or choosing the wrong motorcycle, something like that. It's got 267,000 views. Yeah, th thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. But it's just reminding me most of my videos have about 500 views. Three, 300 views. Three, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, thanks for clarifying that and putting that on tape. Yeah, cheers. So, uh, it's obviously uh, uh, something that a lot of people think about. I've put lowering pegs on this. I have a short leg, so I have the lowered chassis GS, uh, but I find... Uh, that the seat to peg distance is a bit compromised because I've obviously got the lowered seat. So that shortens the distance between my seat and my peg. That creates a bit of a problem with my hip. So now I have Wonderlick lowering pegs on there as well to give me back some of that and take the acuteness off my hip. But what about the new GS? It's a smaller bike than this GS. Uh, what's changed? Well, while I was in Joe Duffy waiting, I took my tape measure and a little block of wood and just took some rough guide dimension changes and see what the difference was. All these measurements I took with the standard seat back on uh, this GS. So all the measurements on the standard seat to the pegs are with the regular bike. It doesn't make a difference what the suspension is or whether this is a low chassis, high chassis. The, the relative position between the seat and the pegs are the same for all the bikes. So all these measurement comparisons are between a GS with a regular seat and standard chassis, low chassis, that doesn't make any difference. Uh, just so we have a baseline. First off, let's get things into perspective as I like to do. Uh, here's the seat to peg ratio of my Daytona 1200. It's quite, it's quite, it's quite acute. <laughs> this bike, I'm owner one of this bike and owner 11. When I lived in England, I bought it, uh, I think 94, 95. Uh, I moved to Ireland and the bike went through nine other owners, came up for sale in Northern Ireland, I spotted it and bought it back. So I'm owner one and 11. But when I was owner one, I was in my thirties. Yeah, mid to late thirties. Uh, and uh, you know, the seat position didn't bother me at all. The seat to peg ratio didn't bother me at all. I got that back uh, a couple of years ago and boy, <laughs> do you know when you go on those rides to keep up to stand up and you're moving your hips around like this? <laughs> yeah, that was that. Look, I've since raised the bars and lowered the pegs <laughs> quite, quite substantially. Uh, I was struggling to ride that bike. But look, the GS isn't anywhere near as extreme as that. But in that video, I looked at a bunch of bikes and one of the superb bikes for seat to peg uh, distance is the Triumph 900 Rally. Now I've never owned one. I've just test ridden one while I had, when I had a Triumph Tiger 1200, I rode this uh, when my bike was in for a service. And one thing that strikes you immediately is the massive seat to peg distance. And that's the seat in the standard uh, seat position. It was the most relaxed bike I've ever ridden on the hips and the knees, brilliant. So that's just setting the scene. So when you look at that new GS, the first thing that strikes you is it's a little bit more compact. I'm not gonna go through all the details of the new 1300 GS because there's lots of videos out there about that. I'm just specifically talking about the dimensions and how they change slightly from here. One of the great things is the carrying capacity has gone up 12 kilos. Brilliant. I, I love that. Brilliant. I'm, I'm sure no doubt in some part to that new uh, subframe. But let's have a look at these seat dimensions. So the 
I'm just going to look at the pillion first. Pillion seat to pillion pegs from the middle of the pillion seat to the middle of the pillion pegs is 42 centimeters. And the distance from the middle of the seat to the pillion peg is 33 centimeters. Now, just take these measurements with a pinch of salt. It was just with a tape measure and a little block of wood. So, you know, I can be a little bit out, but everything's kind of relative. So that pillion seat to pillion peg height is a good eight centimeters uh, shorter than the standard GS. That, that's not great, that's not great, I have to say, for the pillion. So if you've got large pillions, watch out, uh, they may not like that. Now that's mitigated in some way by the pillion peg being moved forward six centimetres. So that will take some of that off. Um, okay, that might take off some knee pressure, but it, uh, and it will take off a little bit of the hip pressure. But overall, I think it's probably slightly negative news for the pillion. What's that? Yeah. Yeah, the bike can carry an extra 12 kilos, but the uh, pillion pegs are a bit shorter. Yeah. No, you, you can't say that, mate. You can't say that on video. No, don't say it. He's going to say something about fat birds and short legs. That's not going on video. So look, that's the pillion covered. Let's go back to the rider. From the middle of the bars, back to the middle of the seat, I gauged that at roughly 70 centimetres on the new bike, and it's about 72 on this bike. So two millimeter, two centimetres closer to me, so brilliant. I have Wunderlicht uh, up and back risers on this. I probably didn't need them up, it was more back. Uh, so I would probably be able to dispense with those on the new bike. Now let's have a look at some seat height comparisons. The seat height on the new bike is 85 centimetres. The standard seat height was 85 or 87, with the seat in the low and the high position. The low seat bike was 80 and 82. So that's the low chassis, low seat version, uh, which, I, which I have. Uh, but that seat height, it feels a bit narrower at the front. So I got a feeling that feels a little bit less, maybe a centimeter less. So it doesn't feel like the full 85, let's put it that way. But if you go for BMW's adaptive ride height system, which is an option, uh, you go down to 82 centimetres uh, seat height. Now, that's 20 mil higher than the lower seat and the low chassis model. So look, I have that in red as if it's a negative, but you know, that probably isn't a negative um, because uh, I reckon it'll feel the same as a 1250 GS low chassis with the low seat because it feels a bit lower because you're, you're narrow at the front of the seat anyway. And a lot of riders will have their seat high at the front, low at the back. So you're probably not getting the seat as low as the original 800 uh, millimeters, more like 810. So I, I reckon with the adaptive ride height, that low, uh, that, that low position with the adaptive ride height is gonna feel the same as a low chassis bike with the seat in the lowest position, but just tilted up at the front. So I think even Stevens, I think that 820 mil adaptive ride height is gonna be perfect, brilliant. Plus of course the benefit of adaptive ride height is you're getting a full stroke suspension rather than the cut down suspension I have. Uh, you get the full stroke suspension bike with that 190 and 200 mil of suspension travel. That's great. So let's get to the nub of the matter, the seat to peg distance. Now, the, if I measure, I'm measuring this from the middle of the rider's seat down to the top of the peg. And as I say, you know, take, take, these, take these measurements with a pinch of salt. But I reckon it was about 51 and a half centimeters from the middle of my seat to the top of my rider peg. That's probably about a centimeter, well, it's not probably, it is uh, about a centimeter shorter. So a little bit tighter than the current GS. So a little bit shorter seat to peg room. Now, if I measure the lowest part of the seat down to the pegs on the new 1300, the distance is about 50 centimeters. Now that's two and a half centimeters less than the standard GS. So we're getting quite cramped here. Now I did measure them on my GS, as I said, with the standard seat, not the low seat. And I don't have rubbers on these pegs. So the bike I measured the 1300 had rubbers. So I'm gonna allow for that 
and say the difference is two centimeters. So the difference between the rider's seat in the lowest position and the pegs compared to the old bike is two centimeters. So a bit more cramped. It's hardly kind of surprising given that, you know, the dimensions of the entire bike have, have, have shrunk. What about now? Something that came up in the comments a lot that people mentioned a lot, uh, look, it's not just about the seat to peg distance, of course, it's where that peg is, how far forward and how far back it is. Weirdly, sometimes a peg being behind you a bit uh, can be nicer because it's allowing your leg to drop more and relieving the hip a little bit. Sometimes when it's too forward, it's a bit forward on my CB1100 and that uh, makes my hip joint a little bit more acute. So where the peg is, forward and back, makes a difference too. Now I reckon though that the new 1300, the distance between the peg and the middle of the seat, it's about 12 centimetres. That seems almost identical to this bike. So no real change there. Now with this GS, I have Wunderlich lowering pegs on there and they say they lower it by 25 uh, millimetres. But because I had the rally pegs on this, it actually only lowered it by 15 uh, millimetres. So with a standard seat on this bike from the middle of the seat to the uh, top of the pegs, I get 540 mil, which is, yeah, it's about as low as I'd want to go. And if I drop to the, 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 the lower seat, uh, that gets quite short again, down to the, kind of like the 520 mark. So yeah, just be wary. Just to give you an example, a Triumph Speed Twin is 520 mil or 52 centimeters from seat to the top of the peg. That, you know, that's quite a lot for a regular road bike. But don't worry, it's not as little as something like a Triumph Trident or <laughs> my old Daytona, which was 39 and a half centimeters. Now I have to fold myself like a piece of origami to get on that. So I'm not saying the seat to peg distance is terrible on the GS, I'm just saying it's less than the current GS. As an example, the Triumph Tiger 1200 GT, that's very comfortable on, with the seat in the regular position. That's very comfortable in terms of you've got about 540, 550, as I say, with the seat in the regular position down to the pegs. That's quite a comfy bike. So in summary, the bad news is the riders losing some of that distance and they're gonna be a bit more acute on the hips and the knees. Look, uh, no 30 year old's gonna give a crap. <laughs> but people like me will. The good news is the taller seat option I think will become much more popular. And I would say uh, if you have a, a, just a normal kind of lens leg rather than short ones like mine, I would buy the high seat when you configure the bike because it's a very low cost option when you configure it with the bike from new, but it's an expensive item to buy you know, aftermarket. So if you have a leg that's 30, 30 inches or over, I'll just swap between millimeters, centimeters and inches, you know, just to mix it up a bit. Yeah, people can do it themselves, they can, they really can. Uh, yeah, everyone knows what Google is now, yeah. Yeah, there's conversion things and everything on them. So, I, if I had a, a, a normal leg, uh, buy the tall seat straight away when you buy the bike, because it's a cheap option when you, when you configure it with the bike. And you're gonna get some of that seat to peg distance back. The other good news is, uh, this is where the adaptive ride height comes in. So for the shorter leg riders using the adaptive ride height, there's gonna be a bunch of riders that it will really suit to get the tall seat as well but use the adapt, choose the adaptive ride height option. So you're gaining the seat to peg distance, but you're also getting that low seat height when you come to a stop. I, I think for a 29 inch leg, that might be something that might suit me perfectly. Standard seat, adaptive ride height. We'll see. What do you mean we'll see? I, I never said I was buying it. I haven't had this a year yet. I don't want to lose my shirt. Yeah, who wants to lose their shirt? The bad news, if you don't go for adaptive ride height, the low seat option is gonna be quite acute. That's gonna be quite acute. So I would think carefully about buying the bike. And if you need, one, why would you do that? Uh, let's say if you wanted the manual suspension bike, which, which I kind of prefer of the electronic suspension. Um, but because of my short legs, I go, all oh, right, I'll have the low seat. That's gonna be even more acute again. Uh, that's going to scrunch you right on. That might not sort. That might not suit a lot of people. 
So if you're thinking, ah, do you know, I'll just go for the low seat. Again, it's a very low cost option when you configure the bike. But you could come to regret that and wish you'd bought the adaptive ride height version instead. And at least it gives you a lot more options. So what might not be great news then out of all this, I think with the adaptive ride height and everything like that, low and medium legged people will be fine, will be fine. Taller guys, long legged guys, they might struggle a bit more. They're definitely going to need risers on the bars and they're definitely going to want the tall seat. Uh, the rest is up to them to test drive, I guess. Um, but I, I think that, that the losers are a pillion, really, which, look, 95% of guys and girls are probably riding by themselves. Do BMW see that as a big loss? I, I don't know. But I, I you know, I, look, I have lowering pegs on my pillion pegs because the pillion that I regularly take is six foot four. <laughs> so I kind of I kind of need I kind of need a bit of pillion leg room. The new bike wouldn't suit me for that. Uh, so if you're a big pillion user, um, the extra low capacity of the new bike might sort you, but the short pillion legs might not, or you might want to put some lower pegs on those. So that's it. That's my rundown of the change of dimensions of the new R1300 GS. I guess, like all these things, a test drive will tell you better than a video will ever tell you. But I just wanted to, I have a keen interest on bike ergonomics and comfort and stuff like that. And I just wanted to see where those subtle changes come in. Because small things can make a huge difference. Ta-da! Now look, I'm not a dyed in the wool GS owner. I haven't ridden every model of GS since the year dot. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not a GS dyed in the wool fan. This is my first GS. I've been a GS driver for less than a year. Driver, GS driver, is that a thing? G GS rider for less than a year. Uh, yeah, look, I, I, I like the bike. Um, yeah, it's okay. Uh, yeah, it's just okay. Uh, but all right, it's a bit better than okay. So it has got its issues, but I've made videos about that and become very unpopular because of it. So I shan't mention it again. Don't mention the suspension again. So, I might cut that bit out.